Who are Hi. you? I'm the mother. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Crystal Castile. Official. All I right. Know. This one, we're brown. Ah, we are brown. Yes. She's brown than the, I am. Runs in the family. <laughs> okay. And you grew up in an even wider town than I did. So I let's did. talk about that. Wider and smaller. Considerably smaller. Yep. Yeah, I was that small hall. Gotta love it. It was interesting. Most of the time, it wasn't that bad, honestly. I mean, there's racist people everywhere. <laughs> As those who are brown know. Or darker. But, or darker, yeah. right? Um, for the most part, I never, I mean, I, I knew I was different, clearly. I had to be blind not to realize that right. I looked Consider different than most everybody only else. Only at your school, that was not all. Almost. There were some <laughs> Native Americans there as well, but there wasn't very many of us. Right. Um, like I said, I had to be blind mm -hmm. to know, not to know. How that big is Orlando, like, populace-wise? Populous? Well, I'm not sure the exact population, but at the time that I was there, the entire school system, pre-K through 12th grade, had about 200 children in it. Yeah. Total. I graduated with 18 people <laughs> in my graduating class. Yeah. So. Yeah. So for the most part, it was fine. I don't really think I really felt that much different probably until I was a teenager. Dating was interesting. Yeah. Tell the story. Which one? The, the, the boy ah, and the jerk dad. Really liked this guy. <laughs> he liked me too, but he, and I do admire his honesty. Even then, I admired his honesty. Yeah. But he basically came to me and said, I really like you, but I can't date you because my dad doesn't like you because you're not white. That mm -hmm. was a very he earth shattering moment. He was at least forward. Moment. He, yeah, no, I admire, I admire his honesty, but it hurt like hell. Excuse my language. Oh, no, it was allowed. We asked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's one of those moments that kind of kind of sticks with you. What was the first moment you were like, damn, it sucks. Uh, <laughs> honestly, that was probably the first time that I really and truly okay. hated the fact that I was browner than most everyone else that I knew. Yeah. Mine, I already talked about it in one of the, I think it was probably, it was probably the racism episode of the podcast, but mine was at middle school and this guy aggressively was like, what are you? Are you black? Are you white? Are you mixed? And he was like up in my face and it was, it was not, not pretty. Not pretty. That was traumatic. A little, little bit. bit. You know? <laughs> Personal narrative. I don't know if you've read that yet, Mrs. Anderson, but it's a good one. No, it's not. But No, I've, it is. Least, I cried when I'm her mom. So. Yeah. No, you know. It's you. okay. Yeah. Um, how was finding makeup in the 90s as a brown person? <laughs> um, it was interesting. My, my mom, who was also white, um, she was smart enough to take me to Oklahoma City to the malls where all the makeup counters were, where there are some people there that are not necessarily white, stark, lily white. And we were able to figure out some shades and everything. And from that point on, I was able to kind of go on my own and figure out stuff that would work for me. Well, that's good because the makeup industry has become a lot more inclusive in the last few years. I'm waiting for an olive line though. I don't have a shade yet. <laughs> waiting on it. I'm a busy mom who stopped wearing makeup, so it's kind of wasted on me. Yeah. But I just have crappy someday. skin, so I mean, I don't really wear it, but there are some times where she should look like an ogre, so I need it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but waiting on that olive one. Um, so, you work at DHS. I do. And your husband's a cop. Yes. Lovely family, guys. We have very interesting <laughs> dinner conversations. <laughs> we touched on that in the podcast, too. <laughs> Okay, so what have you noticed about, because we talked about socioeconomic patterns and the races that fall in the pattern, because you work in AFS. I do now. I'm, I've been five years in AFS, and then I spent three years at working child care licensing. And then explain what AFS is to the people. AFS stands for Adult and, and Family Services. Um, we are the ones who are responsible for making sure, determining whether or not people are financially eligible for programs like SNAP, food stamps, Medicaid, um, child care subsidy for the ones who need help paying for child care while they work or go to school. That's what I spend all of my time doing. So what are the people, what are the people, what races do the people predominantly fall on that you deal with? Um, believe it well, let me explain kind of how it works now. DHS used to be where Payne County 
just worked Payne County mm-hmm. cases. Right. Now, because of less workers and more caseload, that's just not feasible anymore. So we may be here out of Payne County, but we carry cases that are in Payne County, Logan County, Noble County, K County, Pawnee County, and Osage County. All right? Um, K, Pawnee, and Osage counties in particular have a large Native American right. um, residence there. Stillwater, Payne County, we have a lot of international students that are do sometimes seek help with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, what we would consider the run-of-the-mill, quote-unquote, you know, normal, normal um, white people, black people, Hispanic people. Right. We really do see a little bit of everything. That's good, because you, you mean you would expect get, gauging on backgrounds and everything between stereotypes and everything that the browner races, the Hispanics, the, the blacks, mm-hmm. all of them would be the predominant people you see. Is it like that in other offices in Oklahoma? Yes. Um, some Oklahoma County, for instance, they're going to have a, a lot of Caucasian people too, but there are a very large Hispanic and African American populations that they're going to deal with at DHS in Oklahoma County area, in Tulsa County. Right. Some of basically the areas that you would expect to see larger populations of those ethnicities. Right. And then, you know, we talked about this earlier, we don't have any specific stories, but you, the people on the Dunnigan side of your family immigrated from Ireland, correct? Correct. My grandfather Dunnigan was full blood, 100% Irish. My grandmother Dunnigan was full blood Scottish. You wouldn't know that looking at me, but I promise, I swear. She's next to that. <laughs> <laughs> I am half Caucasian, I promise. Um, and then the the brown is a big surprise. I, I'm not sure where. Oh yeah, we talked about that from. in the podcast too. Yeah, identity crisis has been running through this household for a long time. This is going to sound crazy, but my whole entire life, and you can attest to this in your 14 years, you've been dealing with the "what are you" oh my question. Gosh. And I started a long time just saying that I was. Hispanic. Um, yeah, yeah. Just because that's something that's that they such a buy. Broad category. It's a broad category. It can go from, you know, the Caribbean to to Spain for that matter, you know. It's just a broad category and it answers that question that some people seem to really need an answer you know, about me. You I know, just so kind of like, give I'm up. Hispanic. And I, I roll with it. Like other or don't want to share. Or I put Caucasian just to get the questions. You never know what's right. Me. I like to switch it up because I'm feeling feisty or not. Right. Well, and then whenever you and I go out in public with your dad oh, they still give us and our children, checks. Yeah. yeah, my other children, they still ask if we're, you know, if we, yeah, if the brown people are, are sitting next to each other, and all the very white people are sitting next to each other. And I'm like, if you look at the faces, we all <laughs> we're all related. resemble <laughs> each other. So, yeah, well, you know, those are the things that we live with, pretty much. And then hair, yeah. your biological mother, you know, it's yeah. clearly been straightened. Mine's a lot curlier than hers is. My hair we have very still, different hair, actually. My hair is still very curly. It is. No. But my hair straightens a lot easier than hers does, and I don't have near as much hair yeah. as you What's do. What's funny is I have a quote-unquote more ethnic hair than you do. You, you have do, much wider hair than I do. Like yeah. 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 <laughs> different struggles. Yeah. Um, my biological mother, when I was, you know, a free schooler, she attempted to to straighten, chemically straighten my hair, which you don't do you don't to do. anyone until after they've started, started menstruating. menstruating. So she did permanent damage to my hair. You really can't tell on the top, but on the underneath side, it's straight, it's straight no matter what. Whether it's curly, whether I've taken you know straightener to it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have the same hair pattern, if you will, as everything else does because of that. You know, trying to straighten my hair, I'm sure it would have been easier for her if I had straight hair. Probably. Have you ever experienced workplace discrimination over your hair? Have you ever felt the need to straighten them before job interviews, before yada yada yada, to straighten your hair so you look quote unquote more professional? I honestly have not, but that being said, a lot of the times I have straightened my hair and that's just because I tend to like it more that way. It has nothing to do with what other people's expectations are. Mm -hmm. I just like my hair better generally when it's straight. Now, on the whenever the stars align and you hold it your mouth good. just right and my curls look <laughs> fantastic, yeah. then I love my curls. 
but that happens maybe twice a year, to be perfectly honest. That's fair. Well, see, we talked about it on the podcast, but it was a big step for me last year to go through the existential crisis of wearing my hair curly to a semi-formal event, because up until then, I did not wear my hair curly to anything. Right, anything. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're contemplating and struggling with whether you want to braids and braids to put the twist and yeah, go have the ethnic, the black hair yeah done. Right. Well, and so we talked about this, but I'm struggling with since I don't know what race I am. Is it quote unquote acceptable for me to go get the, even though I clearly have ethnic hair and I could honestly we don't know what the brown where the brown comes from. But, but we're brown you're, enough. Right, but since yeah. you're also mixed and we can't tell from your hair type, there is a good chance we could be African American okay. because my hair is, we just don't know. It's on the coilier side. It's on the kinky side. So I... And to interrupt this tirade, know. I know people are like, go get your your genetic testing. And I'm like, no, that freaks me out. So yeah. I, I can probably answer that question, but I don't well, know. Well, it's also highly <laughs> inaccurate. Yeah. You know, they, they, I was watching something and they, they had triplets. And each and every one of them came back with different DNA results, even though right. they are genetically identical. So, right. yeah, I don't, I just, there's not a good way to figure it out unless we were to go back into the archive that no one has access to. Well, and our, I mean, you and your brother and sister are both interesting, they're all interesting because you have the exact same parents. But we all look completely different. Yeah. Except for my, my brother and I are the he's closest. A, he's a little lighter complected than mm-hmm. I am, but we are definitely, we could be twins, not, I'm not going to lie. He's six, but you know. And then your sister, she is the Fair light skin, skin yeah. blue eyed. She looks like. Basically, well, she has a little bit of wave to her hair, but, but not, not very, very much. Straight. Yeah. Yeah. So. She's, she passes the easiest as being full on Caucasian. Yeah. Kaiser, since he, once he starts going outside more, he won't be able to really pass. But we talked about white passing too. Mm-hmm. And um, in the podcast, I was talking about, you know, my hair and the whole identity crisis and everything. But yeah, I was talking about how I could definitely not white pass. <laughs> now I don't have that privilege question mark. Depends on how you view it. Right. But. Yeah, I just get annoyed with the separate check thing. So, <laughs> and people get confused when I'm sitting with my father, and the very white children are sitting with her. And because that happens so frequently that it doesn't even upset me anymore. Yeah, it doesn't upset me. It's just like, okay, really? I mean, do you ask everyone if they're you know, right? It makes you wonder because yeah. if they ask everybody, I don't care. Okay. No, that's yeah. fine. No, yeah, no, that's <laughs> fine. But you and I both know that <laughs> that's don't not what's going. No, yeah, yeah. No. so. Still water. Love Oklahoma. Sometimes wish it was more diverse. But it's t- pretty diverse. It's just we live in a very Caucasian era- area for the most part. And all of my school classes and everything are heavily, heavily Caucasian. Especially the people in the pre-AP classes, which is what I don't understand. There's not, there's the foreign people and the other races, the percentage of them in the pre-AP classes are very tiny compared to the percent that is Caucasian. So I find that interesting kind of sad but we talked about that at school too it is so but the whole stereotypes and all that plays and the right in economic patterns economic. Like that. <laughs> no absolutely well thank you you're welcome for talking to me you're welcome the casserole is calling i'm sure as you yes. heard the beep so thank Dinner. you this yeah. is book club americana adios <laughs>